think maybe people, maybe I just do not get it. Maybe prepping is just stockpiling a shitload of food. Hold it tight and hopefully no one knocks on your freaking door. Alright guys, welcome back to Bible Living Here. So, today's video, <laughs> bugging out, having the means to bug out. No, no, half y'all just clicked off right now. For the rest of us that are here, please pay attention to what I'm saying. I would rather stay in my home during SHTF. All my preps are here, I'm secure. Uh, but the fact is, different scenarios can happen during SHTF. There's not just one set thing. If you're prepping for just one thing, you might want to open up your eyes a little bit and look at everything, okay? There's so many different things to prep for. Fortunately for us, most of our preps are hand in hand with all of our supplies for whatever scenario we're dealing with. Having a bug out plan is very key in survival. I've seen the comments, I will die on my castle. But what you do you? Me, I prefer to keep my family alive as long as possible and also myself in the process. But that's just me. All right, guys, so when it comes to bugging out, please learn how to read maps. All right, we've done videos in the past and there should be a pop-up there for you. Topographical maps. Learning how to read these things, learning how to walk them out, plot courses, follow up on courses, know where you have stuff hidden, cache spots whatever know how to read a map i'm not talking about just a road atlas okay now if that's if you don't know how to read a road atlas you need to start taking a course all right you need to start learning how to read maps but this is a topographical map i use this in our outdoor survival all the time we actually run our own outdoor survival business so with topographical maps you got to have the appropriate tools good compass um map reader compasses everything protractors you need to make sure you have what you need to lay out your course follow your course set up courses whatever it is that you need to do find a location you need to know how to do that first thing that comes in is learn how to count off your own pace count that is key so you'll be walking like crazy and have no clue how far you're gone you need to learn how to do pace count but anyway the reason I've got this stuff up here, I'm going through my gear. Uh, next week, I am heading out. I will be gone for a whole week. I'll be, I'm heading out to a new location. Right now, I'm looking at the maps and stuff of the area, get a good feel of it before I get out there. Going out there a full week, I'm setting up another addition to our survival course. Like I said, we run our own business as well. So I'm going out for a week, clearing out spots, working on getting that set up as well. One of the things I wanted to do was set up an advanced course. So with my work schedule, not just YouTube, actual working a job, uh, we had to go back and dial back to just private courses. I just couldn't do this job full time anymore. Just couldn't. So we had to go work another, I had to go to work an actual, actual job out in the shipyard and still run my business. So with this guys, I encourage you if you're interested in doing your own business, Hey, if you're doing an outdoor survival business, please know what you're talking about. Go to whatever courses you got to in North America, wherever it is that you're from. Take their courses, get their patches, get their certs, get everything that they offer. That way, when you say that you are a survival company, you have plenty of backing up. Yeah, right here with me, man. Okay. Tell us I'm, when you're live, brother. I'm, I'm live. All right, guys, here we are at the Pathfinder School with Survival Living, just patched the intermediate class. If you want some good information, check his channel out on YouTube for sure. Good job, man. All right. Perfect. I can edit it. I can cut right there, man. Fucking Sean, man. And then after that, you got to do all the legal stuff. Uh, you got to get licensed. You need to carry insurance. Just having a waiver sign 
is not good enough. Now, that does help when you're in court over someone getting injured because they do sign a waiver, but you still have to have liability insurance. Yeah, that's the pricey one. Uh, but you need it. If you're doing this type of stuff, anything can happen. Anything from snakes to someone falling, breaking their ankle, breaking their leg. I've seen that many times out outdoors. People can get hurt. I've seen people cut their hands just putting their hand in their back pocket. They had their knife back there or whatever. You know, hell, I cut my hand open with my axe. And I was in the middle of filming. I went to go move it. Bumped it. Split my finger wide open. Yeah. That happens. So, you need to make sure you got your bases covered. All right. Now, for courses and stuff, guys, these are hard. All right. We run a basic course. There should be something in our playlist where, yeah, we have a Survival LOC playlist. It should be popped up or it's in the description. You can check that out. I give a lot of information as I can in that. I don't give out too much information because you got to, you know, take the course and stuff. Now, I know there's all the comments. I will never bug out. That's fine. You do you. do you. Me, I value my family's lives. I actually value my life, too. If I have to plan things out and get things set up in a different location in case I have to leave my home to keep my family alive, I'm going to. I mean... I'm a prepper for a reason. I don't prep just to give up. You know, I had a conversation with a person. This is this has been about two years now, and this has always stuck with me. I was talking about bugging out and having a bug out plan. And the person's telling me that they have two kids, a husband that can't walk as well that he used to. And they said that they would just shoot their family and then themselves when it came down to that because odds are they're going to die out in the woods anyway i don't know why you're on a prepping channel i don't know why I'm, I'm not just a prepper i teach survival because i've had to live this i, I don't get the i give up mentality i prep so i do not have to give up i will not give up on anything I don't when it comes down to survival you're just willing to just give up and turn your firearms on your own family you know so they had control of you know it's just I just don't get it anyway I do recommend you guys check out my playlist on real outdoor survival we also have a playlist survival living LLC I go over all kind of different things in the course you need to be working on your outdoor survival skill one of the things that I'm different from other preppers on prepping channels is I try to incorporate prepping and bushcraft. I believe the two should go hand in hand. And I met so much resistance ever since I started this channel. I, I, I don't get it. I must be missing something. To me, a prepper is preparing for disaster. And I love the quote, every YouTube prepper and community person types in, I do not plan to just survive, I will thrive. But as soon as I do an outdoor survival video showing you out in the shit, I would never do that. I would die in my home instead. I don't know, maybe they think, maybe people, maybe I just do not get it. Maybe prepping is just stockpiling a shitload of food hold it tight and hopefully no one knocks on your freaking door oh my god you're not folding that map right actually I fold it this way so it sits in my map case works good for me um, I want to encourage you guys to get out there and try practice don't just watch a youtuber don't just watch a survival video or TV show because they're all mocked up BS anyway. You know, when you clip stuff, they'll show a, a, someone making a fire with smashing two rocks together. Oh, I can do that. What you didn't see is that one, if it actually did happen or did it have some type of accelerant in it, what you didn't see is that they were sitting there for eight hours banging on that rock before that thing finally sparked off. 
All right. Now, my advice, make sure you have access to actually like church or flint. You know, make sure you have the appropriate rocks to be doing this. Um, this is why we carry carbon blade. All right. A carbon knife. Works great. You'll get a spark. That's a mora. I don't care what type of knife you have. As long as it's carbon, high carbon, you're going to get a spark off of it. Okay. There's so much stuff I see on the internet. You know, I was watching this guy. He was using a bow drill. And when his bow drill, I could tell it was fake. The bow drill ignited because he got fire. That's not how a bow drill works. Anybody that actually knows how to do bow drill, when you're using a bow drill, you're creating dust that's all captured up. And it, the friction heat causes a coal. It, it, it ignites in itself, but it's not a blasting poof flame. That's some form of accelerant they've added to this. I've been running bow drills for a very long time, and I've never had one burst into flame not like that so be careful the shit you see on youtube just warning you all right guys speak to you later